deadly serious, but always human. This was the way Hap did business. Thank you, Dr. Lewis. You know, doctor, after looking over my audience, I'm going to give my prepared speech back to Captain Sheffield. <laughs> and if you want it for your record, you can ask Captain Sheffield for it. And I'm be sure, I'm sure that he'll be glad to give it to you. Now on with the show. <laughs> I think that you people here are entitled to a little bit of background on this thing that we call air power. Air power. No one was better suited to talk about it than Hap or better able to put words into action to mold our Air Force into the strongest in the world. Hap's keen awareness of the significance of air power made him invaluable on the international scene. At many conferences, including Casablanca, Hap was able to work smoothly and effectively with our allies. But here and for months to come, Hap was to argue for an idea that was not particularly acceptable mass bombing of the enemy during daylight hours. The plan was not greeted with favor, for at this time the British were successfully carrying out a program of night bombing. While night bombing by the RAF was proving effective, it was Hap's argument that daylight precision bombing could cause far greater devastation than was possible during darkness. On the agenda at Casablanca were questions as to where the limited number of planes could be best utilized. General Arnold's plans received the green light from the other Allied participants. In the Atlantic, serious damage was being caused by German U-boats. B-24s were assigned to the anti-submarine command. The number of German submarines harassing our convoys began to decline. In the Far East, there were other problems. Hap went over the air needs of this theater with General Joseph Stilwell and General Chenault. Here it was decided that a difficult flying route over the Himalayas could provide a flow of supplies to the Chinese. The airlift over the hump was one of the extraordinary accomplishments of the war. <laughs> 